Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Don't Mom Alone podcast. I am your host, Heather McFadden, and this is the place where I get to walk alongside you and connect you with people and resources so you know that you don't mom alone. And in this episode, it is our first week of the summer of mentorship, and we're sharing an episode on resolving sibling conflict. My guests are Jim and Lynn Jackson of Connected Families, and this was originally episode 126. So truthfully, there were times as, as our kids grew older and as, as we grew wiser, where I, I truly did. It was like, oh, they're having another fight. There's We got another opportunity here to help them grow. And there was almost a certain like, hey, this is cool because conflict is inevitable. And my role in it can either be constructive or destructive, and I have an opportunity to be constructive with the things I've learned. So you ask the question, well, so how do we do that? And that's where this this four-step peace process, which really is, um, it's a reframing of a parent's goal from making conflict stop Mm -hmm. to uh, helping our kids develop joy in their relationship and a value of true restoration or reconciliation. Maybe you have perfect children. Maybe you have siblings that never fight. And I'm so happy for you, but there are a lot of us out here struggling, particularly in the summer with a lot more time together, maybe even on vacations. Praise Jesus, we can go on vacations, but it does give a lot of opportunities for conflict. I even got a quote unquote opportunity yesterday with us doing less screen time. There's more screaming. And I've reached into my toolbox pulled out the skills from Jim and Lynn and just remembering to stay calm and recognize that the goal is not to get the conflict to stop, but to help train in the midst of it, which takes time. And for most of us, there is a little bit more time in the summer. So I want to help equip you with Jim and Lynn's expertise. I've put in the show notes, if you go to don'tmomalone.com for this episode, I put some little phrases that you could use to help guide this conflict resolution. I also have a link to their course, their sibling conflict course and a code for y'all to save money. So I'll mention more about that at the end of the show, but let's get right to it. Here we go. Hey, Jim and Lynn, welcome back to the God Center Mom podcast. Great to to be here. Yeah, really good to be here. Oh, and you sound great. Y'all just did such a good job with your technology on your end. We're so thankful. (laughs) When we know we're going to be on the Heather McFadden podcast, we we turned up the... Right, you try to get cracked together. (laughs) class is up. It's amazing. Well, y'all have such wisdom, such insight. You've helped so many people to stay connected with their family and their discipline to, you know, it's amazing to think that discipline doesn't have to be a shaming situation and a, and a place where you're disconnected from your kids. And so that's been so helpful for me, but I'm bringing you back on because summer is upon us, uh, in the McFadden <laughs> house. Yes. And I have a feeling it is for a lot of people listening, unless they do year round school and bless you. And if you homeschool, this may not be a shocker, but for those of us who don't homeschool or do year round school, uh, summer means lots of boys at home together with not a lot of structured activity, which leads to a lot of disagreements, which leads to my stress level going through the roof and really just wanting to flee the whole situation. So uh, I need your help. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's well, it. We'll do the best we can in the time <laughs> we've got to give it. <laughs> and and y'all, I mean, I know I've already said in the intro and I'll say again, but can you just tell everybody real quick where where y'all are coming from and where they can find you online? Uh, yeah, we're at connectedfamilies.org. Um, we're out here in, in Minneapolis area, but um, we love helping families to just really grow in connection and faith as they wade through the messy stuff of life. And you all had a few kids. Can you just briefly introduce everybody to your kids? Yeah, we had three kids, Daniel, Bethany, and Noah. They're three kids that are born within a four-year span, so they're real close together in age. And uh, uh, we valued family togetherness. And so this really <laughs> intense group of kids was together a lot, and the intensity of their squabbles was uh, was high. And um, we figured early on that we had some choices. One is, is we could... You know, we could just kind of 
put them over in the other room and let them fix it t together. But we found as we did that, that the, the oldest tended to become more dominating and mm -hmm. learn to get his way a little bit more easily. And the youngers started thinking of themselves more as victims and, mm -hmm. uh, and some resentment was starting to grow and we didn't, you know, we didn't want to foster that. And so we started thinking our way into, well, what is, you know, what's a biblical model for, for reconciliation of relationships and how do we, apply that to our little kids and then learn and grow together. And uh, oh, by the way, the kids aren't the only ones having conflict. Lynn and I are having it and we're having it with the kids. And we're, we're you know, we're trying to sort all this out with the heart of, with the heart of the gospel in the middle of it. And um, there's, there's lots of to do plans out there that tell that, that uh, you know, that tell parents, here's what you should do when your kids do this. And, uh, you know, at the, it, we have to decide what we're going to do, but we realize there's something underneath what we're doing and let's address that and let's address matters of the heart here mm -hmm. as we're working ourselves and with our kids to understand and then reconcile conflict. Mm -hmm. yeah. We tended to, uh, for me particularly, I tended to rush into a situation, into their conflict with my baggage, my resentment. Mm. Um, I had been a younger sister picked on by older brothers, and so mm. I was quick to, to rush in going, yeah. Daniel, that is not okay to treat your sister like that. Yes. Oh my stars! You were. Yeah, well, did you get a video I, camera in my house? Yes. Yeah. Well, and I'm the oldest who had younger sisters, and so my thinking was: is Lynn, lighten up on the oldest, you know, bossy kid because that was me. And yeah. so then I would tell her, you know, you shouldn't do it that way, and that's not fair to him. And then we'd have that our was, fights, and then the kids were off the hook, and they yeah, take yeah. their little giggling <laughs> fight out to the backyard. Well, Lynn yeah. and I had our conflict. Yeah, and you just thought of Bethany as a whiner because she was the younger sister that was tattling. <laughs> yeah, well, come on, Bethany. Bye. Up. <laughs> that is really interesting to think of our own sibling oh, situations yeah. and how they impact how we yeah. manage our kids and then how it impacts our marriage. I hadn't even thought about that aspect. So well, it's really true. A, a principle that we hold dear in our work is, is the very first step is in engaging with your child is to say, what's going on with me? What am mm. I believing about this? What's my baggage that I might be dragging in? Um, what are my insecurities? What am I believing about my child? You know, that's, that's a real starting place. And, and I found that when I, uh, you know, before I figured that out, it was not going well for me because I'd rush in and try to manage it and make Daniel behave. And it, it just made everything worse. So it mm. was a good, good learning experience. Okay. So how did you do that? How did you, did you in that moment when you heard a fight, you would do some self-reflection or did you do the self-reflection in your own time <laughs> so that you were ready when the fight happened? It, it, uh, really both, but it started with in my own time and realizing that this dynamic was going on, that I was dumping on him, that I was discouraging him. I was making him resent Bethany more because of how I responded to him. Mm. And so then I had to go in with a much bigger sense of, purpose once I was able to set aside, okay, he's not my older brother. And they weren't terrible, but I still had baggage, you know, yeah. but he's not my older brother. Um, and uh, I can engage in a way that could be really helpful for both of them. So mm -hmm. a, a vision that that compelled me forward was just the thought, I want for my kids the kind of relationships that Jesus bought for them on the cross. Mm. And so I, I would go in with a radar of purpose instead of a radar of find the problem mm -hmm. and fix it. And that was just hugely different starting place. Yeah, and and for me, who was less able, especially as a young parent, <laughs> to be cognitive when I was in situations like that, Lynn, Lynn did a good job of taking some of that thought process right into mm -hmm. the conflicts with the kids. Uh, I was quite a bit slower, um, and and for me, uh, you know, the conventional teaching was just stay calm. Right. So. So in my in my thinking, staying calm meant don't yell, just use a softer voice. Mm. Uh, but I said the same things, and you grit your teeth. and I gritted my teeth, <laughs> and my arms were folded. And your the, body you language see. said you weren't calm, yeah, but yeah. your voice was quieter. Yeah, yeah. And so the, to the kids, it doesn't feel any different. Mm. I, I thought I was calm, but the kids, you know, my 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 daughter later in life, one day when I did this, I'm going to, I'm, I'm just going to be calm here and shame her with a calm voice instead of with a yelling voice. And she just looked up at me and said, daddy, stop yelling at me. And I was like, I'm not yelling, <laughs> <laughs> but in my spirit, I was yelling. Yeah. And so this whole, this whole piece of learning to get calm for both Lynn and I in different ways is about, well, why, why do I see like this underneath? And why do I have such a difficult time seeing 
that the kids' conflict as an opportunity to help them learn and grow rather than something that I just have to control and make go away. Uh, and so as, as I, over time, and it wasn't in the heat of the moment, it was in reflection, it was in conversation. What are we doing when we're, what are we trying to do when we're engaging with our kids' conflicts? Are we just trying to get it to stop? Mm -hmm. Or are we trying to help them learn the joy of true reconciliation? And mm -hmm. The answer was B, how do we do that was a little elusive. We tried this, we tried that. But over time, as we've, you know, worked with more and more parents, uh, uh, it, it, you know, this process called Discipline That Connects, which I think you're familiar with, and, and the messages we want our kids to, to grow up, to believe about themselves, you're safe with me, you're loved no matter what, you're God's workmanship called and capable, you're responsible for your life. Those are the messages we wanted our kids to learn also in the context of their sibling conflict. Yeah. Uh, and, and another process emerged for us over time um, that we've deemed or dubbed the peace process, mm -hmm. which has just really be become a helpful thing. Mm -hmm. So it's, good. That, that process is, has been transformational for uh, just many families. And that's, that's the process that we've captured in the online course that we mentioned to you, just specifically about siblings. So one method to help with anxiety, I just practiced it when I was out in the mountains with friends, is you kind of take in your senses and you five things you can hear, four things you can see, three things you feel, et cetera, two things you smell, one thing you taste. And smell is such an important part of helping calm us. And that's what I love about Function of Beauty because you can customize the smells that will bring you the most joy and calm in maybe one of your only moments in the day alone, which is in your shower. So why don't you check it out? Because Function of Beauty is the world leader in fully customized hair care. They create your own unique formula based on a short but thorough quiz. You're going to give your hair everything it needs to look and feel its best. And the products are sulfate and paraben-free, vegan, cruelty-free, over 60,000 real five-star reviews. I have been loving the combination I chose. It's helped give me volume, shine, and the scent. Y'all, I chose one that's kind of invigorating, has a little bit of a mint to it, and it just makes me really happy when I am cleaning my hair. And I love how it's made my hair look. If you want to check it out, go to functionofbeauty.com slash DMA, all caps DMA. Take your quiz, save 20% off your first order. And good news, that applies to their full range of customized hair, skin, and body products. So it's functionofbeauty.com slash DMA. Let them know that you heard about it here and get 20% off your order. That's functionofbeauty.com slash DMA. Okay, so here's here's how it's gone before. And even if we've been trained on what we should tell our kids or what we shouldn't, it's either you hear fighting and it's escalating and you yell out, stop it. Like, that's it. <laughs> that's the full instruction. So you didn't stay calm. You didn't provide training. Uh, you just yelled out a command that is like my least favorite. Like, mm -hmm. I, it's my least favorite thing. Yeah. Um, and then they when I say it. They don't when stop they it. No. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. if they don't stop it, you say, stop it, or you're both going to have to go to your rooms until you can say you're sorry. Right. And that was the next thing. So then you <laughs> you say, you better make it right with your brother, because I know I'm supposed to make sure they make it right. Like, I know they're supposed to reconcile. <laughs> make it right with your brother right now. And so, like, they're looking at each other like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't forgive you. <laughs> the next line. You better uh, forgive your brother. I mean, this is not like a joke. This is yeah. from playbook script from last night. I'm not going to say sorry. I'm not going to forgive you. And it's not working. And I know that I'm saying yeah. all the right words. I'm We're pursuing peace, right? We're reconciling. Yeah. We're trying to make it right. Tell him three nice things about him. I mean, it's <laughs> it's not it's not even my tone's not right. Right, right. And what that's what I love about Jesus is like he doesn't let us get away with external stuff yeah. when what he's really after is for our hearts. Mm. And so um, mm. if my heart as a parent is just frustrated and irritated with my kids, yeah. they will so know it. So yeah. like there was one time that um, we were all cleaning. So we were crabby to each other, cleaning for guests. Yep. And um the kids are crabby. They picked on each other. So I sent him in the room with this glare and I said, all right, you guys, 
go, go reconcile and work this out. And I just glared at Daniel, like, I know who the Mm -hmm. real problem is here. And they were in the room for a minute and Bethany was screaming at the top of her lungs. And I knew that it was my fault that I'd Mm -hmm. set him up the wrong way. So Jim greeted the guests. I went in and had a do over and said, you know what, guys, this is my fault because I didn't I didn't get you off to a good start at all. And I am so sorry. So let's work this out. I'll be in here to help you. And let's work this out. And then we worked it out great. And it was fine. But I had to own the fact that they read my heart. My my messages to them was, I'm sick of this. You guys are a problem. Um, You know, and I just want this to stop for my convenience. And that's a discouraging message, and it doesn't empower anyone for conflict resolution. So Jesus makes us go after our hearts in this um, in order to engage in a really, I am for you. I want to teach you skills. I want you guys to have an awesome relationship. Mm -hmm. And when that communicates, it makes a big difference. How do we switch our heart from that, like, annoyance? I'm so sick of everybody fighting. Can you just be kind to one another to looking forward to that fight so you can <laughs> train them up. I don't know. That Not looking forward, forward uh, being okay I, with well, it. Actually, like, I mean, so truthfully, there were times as, as our kids grew older and as, as we grew wiser where I, I truly did. It was like, oh, they're having another fight. There's We got another opportunity here to help them grow. Mm. And there was almost a certain like, hey, this is cool because conflict is inevitable and my role in it can either be constructive or destructive and I have an opportunity to be constructive with the things I've learned. So you asked the question, well, so how do we do that? Mm -hmm. And that's where this this four-step peace process, um, which really is, um, it's a reframing of a parent's goal from making conflict stop Mm -hmm. to uh, helping our kids develop joy in their relationship and a value of true restoration or reconciliation. Right. Um, so if, if I go in, if I realize, oh my goodness, I have an opportunity to help my kids f- experience and grow in a value of true restoration and reconciliation, that, that prepares me differently than, oh geez, I have to make this stop again. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know how. And the four-step process, I'll, and I'll just say it quick, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's helped us and so many parents is, is, yes, calm. But calm isn't just zip your lip calm. It's understand what's going on inside of you. Understand what's going on inside of your kids. Move, figure out what you need to do to be calm. Use that as your modeling for your kids. You know what? I, I'm too upset right now to be helpful and constructive with you too. So I'm going to take a break. Why don't you guys take a break too? And then when I'm ready, I'll let you know. And when you're ready, let me know. And we'll be calm. And then we can do the next stuff. So calm is, it, we're on crazy mountain. We, you know, you've identified, we've identified in the way that we talk about this is, is this, is this ever, ever uh, ascending climb onto crazy mountain, yeah, which comes escalates. from, just trying to, yeah, yeah, it just keeps escalating and yeah. from our efforts to make it stop. Mm-hmm. But if we realize the way off that mountain is to truly get calm, a calmness of heart, not just for us, but to help our kids, you know, to model that for their kids and help them learn to do that and self-regulate and take their deep breaths or whatever it is. Calm is where we start. That's the first sort of rock across the mountain or across the stream away from the mountain to the to the oasis on the other side of true joy-filled reconciliation. Um, so calm. And then uh, what can we do to help foster understanding of, of, of what's going on in me, of what's going on in another person. How can we give words to that? So we calm down, we understand each other. Uh, then once we're at that place, we start to do some solving. This is what happened. Here's how you feel. Here's how she feels. What do you think we ought to do about that to solve it? How are we going to solve this? What does solving look like here? Um, in our course, we have a, a, a videotape of a family who put this in place and learned it. And the kids actually do the interview. And it's amazing to watch these three kids who are, you know, similar in age and, and stage to our kids. The genders were a little different, but, you know, they were, what, 11, 9, and 8 or something like that. And they right, did so this our video. Kids 15 years ago or so. Yeah, so it's like our kids 15 years ago. And they look at each other and they're laughing and they're like, yeah, when mom and dad figured out this peace process thing and kind of let us figure it out and just helped us as much as we needed help, uh, you know, it, we really felt better about ourselves and we really felt better about them and mm-hmm. we had it was better for all of us and we went to school and started telling our friends about this mm-hmm. <laughs> so here's kids who learn to calm because their parents model it they learn to understand each other uh, they learn to do some things on their own to solve 
uh, and then, uh, you know, in small ways, in large ways, whatever ways that we can, the fourth piece of this is to celebrate it, mm-hmm. uh, to celebrate the work you've done, even if it's not perfect, uh, to, to understand each other, to calm down, to put a plan in place, uh, you know, have a, have a popcorn party, go down the street for coffee, go on a bike ride to get whatever it might be, just do a little so even if it's just a high five, acknowledge, boy, you're working on this and it was better this time than it was last time. And I bet that feels good. Um, and so there's the four things, yeah. calm down, understand each other, uh, solve and celebrate that leads to building a, a culture of reconciliation. And when parents put that in their brain going into conflict as the goal, here's what I'm trying to do instead of just make it stop. It's empowering for both parents and for kids. Right. I think a lot of times we get so frustrated because we, we feel ill-equipped. Yeah. And so then we don't know what to do. And that's frustrating. And now I've got this situation 10, 15 times a day where I feel ill-equipped and I just want it to stop. But when I when we really focused in on what our strategy was and we were equipped to help our kids grow and we could see the little baby steps of growth, it really did become very rewarding to engage in that. Was it always fun? No. Was there times where I thought, are we making any progress at all? Yes, yeah. it was those days. But in the big picture, to have to feel equipped and to feel like I had a big picture goal really made the difference in me going from the, trying to be calm with my teeth gritted to having a peaceful, purposeful heart when I engage with my kids. And that was a huge difference. Well, and I could see how, you know, if we just do the stop it or that you stay calm, but you need to go fight over there, mm-hmm. then it doesn't decrease the amount of conflict. Like, mm-hmm. I think I would think, you know, you said 10 to 15 times a day. That's what it can feel like some days. But if we use this peace process, I would think that it would decrease because maybe they're even using it on their own without your involvement. Is Absolutely. That, have you seen that oh, happen with families? Absolutely. And we share stories. Each each of the sessions has a story of a family and their process. And that was really a common thread across the board that the kids, when the kids began to learn this and they began to feel good about what they were doing, then oftentimes the parents' involvement just needed to be, okay, you guys are having a hard time. Why don't you go just calm down and relax? And then do you need some help solving it or do you think you can solve it on your own? Mm. Once the kids had these steps in their minds, as well, they often, I think we got it, you know, and then they would be much more likely to solve it well, as opposed to the older or, you know, stronger child just dominates. I don't know about y'all, but in the summer, I don't really love solving for dinner because it's hot and because there's people around all the time. (laughs) And there's a lot of fun to be had. And the last thing I want to do is spend a lot of energy planning and shopping and cooking. So I love to connect you with great sponsors that simplify this for you. And one of those options is HelloFresh because you get fresh pre-measured ingredients. You're going to get great recipes. My kids loved the family-friendly options I chose when we did HelloFresh that all of the food came packaged really well and it was all ready and I really could cook it in 30 minutes or less. So if you want to check it out, I would highly recommend it, especially because HelloFresh is 28% cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store and 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal. I don't know if you do this, but sometimes when I haven't made a plan... (laughs) The go-to is let's just get drive through let's just go out, and that gets really expensive really quickly. So if you want to go check it out, go to HelloFresh.com slash DMA14. That's DMA14. Use the code DMA14. You're going to get 14 free meals plus free shipping. Y'all, that's a no-brainer. HelloFresh.com slash DMA14 with the code DMA14 to get these 14 free meals plus free shipping. Y'all need to check out HelloFresh. It is America's number one meal kit. Um, Okay, let's do a scenario. Okay. So the mom listening can can see these steps played out. And I'm just going to make one up. It didn't even happen last night. I'm not even going to pretend it <laughs> happened. Okay. It totally happened. And it was while I was on the phone with my sister. So I was completely distracted. So it escalated 
because I couldn't do my normal over controlling, like you said at the beginning, Lynn, where I jump in and say, you better treat your, why did you, da, da, da. I couldn't jump in. So it didn't get better because they need me is what my mind tells me. They need me to make it stop. So one brother says a rude remark. One of the older siblings says a rude remark, which makes the younger brother who doesn't communicate as well uh, get his feelings hurt, but doesn't know how to tell him that hurt my feelings. So he just hits in response, which then escalates to more name calling, more violence, <laughs> an all out <laughs> WWF in the living room. So what, like, talk us through that scenario and let's pretend maybe I'm not on the phone, but I'm in the other room and it's escalating. What? Let's go through the four steps. Sure. So <clears throat> number one, when that's happening, what do you recognize going on inside of you? I'm like so annoyed. So okay. annoyed that they can't treat each other better. That's literally the thought in my head. Yeah. Why can't they so treat do, each other so better? Do you want your annoyance to be the driving source of your engagement with them? Or would you like something else to be the driving source to your engagement with them? That is an easy answer. Something else. <laughs> Something yeah. else. So, so, so the, the kind of one of the first things around calming down is to recognize that's what's going on inside of me. And if the next step that I take is about my annoyance, mm -hmm. we're probably going to go on crazy mountain again. Yeah. But, but uh, Lord, what can I do to, right here, right now to calm my heart? Lord, what's the truth about my kids? What's the truth about me here? How do I breathe? Right. Uh, do, do I need to go in right away? Is anybody, you know, has anybody got the, the fireplace poker and they're ready to hit the other kid in the head <laughs> with it? If true so, harm then, about to if happen. So, if so, then forget all of this and go in and make it stop. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Dive yeah, on yeah. top of the pile. Yeah, okay. yeah. Join so, in, join but, in. But, but that's 1% of the time. The other 99% of the time, we jump in before we need to, thinking we need to, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and thinking our kids need us to, when in fact, what we're doing when we do that is we're teaching them they need us in order to resolve their uh, us and our emotional uh, uh, energy and our desire to stop our feelings of annoyance. They need that in order to stop their conflict. So they're not going to learn anything about wisdom in stopping their conflict. They're just going to learn what they have to do to keep mom happy, um, which is not what you want to do, which is not what any mom or dad listening wants to do. But that's what we do without thinking about it because our annoyance drives us to make this stop. Because mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, what we want to stop more than their conflict is our feeling of being annoyed. So this isn't even about this isn't even about their well being and their learning right now. This is about taking care of me. And kids don't like it when parents treat them in a way that takes care of the parents. Kids need us to treat them in a way that takes care of them. Well, what does it mean to take care of them? It means to go into this without my annoyance. Mm -hmm. Lord, this is about my annoyance. I want this to be about them. Hey kids. <laughs> You're struggling. Do you need help or do you want to solve this on your own? You know, usually, especially if, if kids have been trained in the peace process a little bit, you know, the, oh, geez. Okay. We got it, mom. <laughs> right, right. They know that's but the cue. The that's the cue that they've gone too far. In yeah. the intensity she's talking about, you, you know, you may need to enter in with kind of, you know, if you enter in quietly, like boys settle down now and they're like screaming and swinging at each other, that's, they're not even going to be aware of you. So you, mm -hmm. you can enter with just sort of big connective energy, like, whoa, it's intense in here. Mm -hmm. You guys are having a hard time, aren't you? Anybody want a hug? You know, mm -hmm. so you, you have big energy, but it's, it's, I'm yeah. for you. I care about you energy. I get how hard this is kind of mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. and, and not a, and not a picking one and not a picking one favorite. Like, like you're exactly. not taking sides. You're not taking sides. Exactly. Cause yeah. that's that, that taking sides is the, is the first step to just climb and crazy mountain of, yeah. of anger and aggravating everything. So, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. You're expressing empathy to both kids. This is really hard, yeah. isn't it? And meaning it because it is thinking of fights where we've had as a couple or as, you know, with even from our childhood with our siblings, it is really hard. And so to enter with that understanding. And then right. they start, they start telling you immediately, mm -hmm. well, he did blah, blah, blah. And they start telling you exactly who did what and what did, and they're giving the whole rundown. What do you yeah. say to that then? Well, so let's hold on for a second, okay? Because that skips that skips to solve. And, oh, okay. And but what if so, they jump to but, solve and you have? Well, when they jump to solve and you've got this process in your mind, yeah. you know, you know what? So we, we we can solve this in a minute, okay? But but uh, and we'll figure all that out in a bit. But let's understand each other a little bit here first, okay? Okay. Well, you, we haven't actually gotten the kids to right. a place of calmness, yeah. oh, okay. right? So okay. I often said to our kids, "This is really intense." And, and our, our, solving, our solving brains won't work. 
until mm-hmm. they're calm. Mm-hmm. So why don't you find a comfortable spot to relax? Mm-hmm. How long do you think you'll need? Five minutes, 10 minutes, you know, and then we'll come back together. And that break is really hugely important. It's not the most convenient thing for a parent, but it's in the long run, it's super mm-hmm. helpful. So, and if it's, you know, instead of go to your room, it's find a comfortable spot to that relax wording, and calm down. That's a huge wording deal. And heart is everything. Yeah. So then you bring them back together. And then they're usually ready to go to the next step from calm to understand. Okay. And that's where you can start to talk about, you know, the feelings that people were having and the frustration. And boy, you guys were both. So you were frustrated and you were frustrated. And so you got that in common. You were both really frustrated. It's I I get that. Dad and I were frustrated with each other the other day. Mm -hmm. And it's tough to work that out. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 how much um, in that understanding do you jump in and coach is that at the beginning you're doing more coaching you know for younger kids that maybe they don't even know how to they have very limited vocabulary for how they felt or what they want to start telling you what happened instead of where they're coming from right right so um yeah and and in our course we go into sort of specific scripts that you can use for different age kids because it's tough you know you relate to teenagers much differently than toddlers but just even you know for a child that's really struggling with that and can't figure it out like classic scenario we had bethany at one and a half and two and daniel at four he was super articulate and she shut down when she was anxious Mm -hmm. and so we had to be very concrete and specific bethany are you feeling sad or mad right now i'm sad Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, thanks. Here, you look at Daniel and say that. You know, don't. Yeah, and Daniel that. would say, well, yeah, that's because she did whatever, whatever, whatever. And then Lynn would look at Daniel and say, Daniel, this is Bethany's turn to tell you how she feels. And it's going to be important that you listen so that you understand her. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to get your turn in just a minute. So. Mm. Um, so then I, when we try to get out of the middle, so, oh no, don't talk to me. Say that to Daniel. Daniel, I'm sad. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you facilitate that way. Okay, Daniel, did you hear that? What did she say? What yeah. did she say, Daniel? What did you hear? She said she's sad. Do you like okay. feeling sad? Do you like feeling sad, Daniel? No. Do you like that what you did made Bethany feel sad, Daniel? No. Mm. How do you feel, Daniel? Well, I feel mad because she did this, that, or the other thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, Bethany, what did you hear Daniel say? Mad. Right. Yeah, so you two are listening to each other. That feels so much better, doesn't it? Now you're understanding each other. Yeah. And they and you can use that language we learned in a, what is it, pre-marriage class. When you do yep. this, I feel this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And keep in mind as you're teaching your young kids that, that this is marriage class for yes. them. Yes. Yes. They're, That's they're why it feels so important. Well. Yes. It's so important. We can't just think- ignore it and say, stop it, or I'm going to stay calm, but you go fight over here. I mean, it feels like it's a valuable skill we're training them. This is, this is conflict. 101. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And if you think about what are the two most important things kids need in life? Love of God, mm. to understand God and His grace. And number two, to how to have wonderful, intimate relationships with other people. Yeah. And this is equipping them for their future marriages, for their future parenting, for their future workplace, for their future role in the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is incredibly important. I've got goosebumps right now just talking about that. Mm-hmm. It is so important mm-hmm. to equip kids for these close, connected rich relationships in life especially in a digital world where we're offending and then moving on and uh, online we can offend so easily and and also avoid and ignore so easily yes how we've offended yeah yeah Yeah. and that's even a good point you know as people you know as teens start to define themselves by their digital relationships if they have really solid connected relationships at home they're much less vulnerable to that Mm, that's true if they know who they are and who they can go to Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, so the, they. So go ahead. Well, the under the understanding part is really what parents tend to. See. So parents will say, "Okay, I'm going to calm down. Right. And I'm going to get this to stop. And now here's what you did to your sister. So you need to solve this. You need to make this right. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and we go right to that. Mm-hmm. But the understand part is the why of solving. Mm-hmm. Like, so what was the what the understand each other is? What's the impact of this conflict on everybody here? And what do we want to do about that to solve it? Mm. Um, and so that's why understanding each other is so important. Then you can move towards solving with the kids and work with them to come up with solutions. And there's where, you know, instead of coming in and say, you need to make this right, 
It's like, well, now what, what, what could be done here to make this right? How, how well, can we make this right with each other? And before going into solution, you're giving them empathy because mm -hmm. otherwise they're just going to the solution for what benefits them best and self-protection. Right. You've given them eyes to see yeah. there's two people in this. It's not just about you and how you see the world. It's exactly. another person's feelings, a person that you care deeply about. Yeah. You're getting it. Absolutely. All right. Not. Okay. That here we go. Here we so, go. <laughs> it's so critical because we can reach, you know, uh, uh, unions and uh, labor forces can reach agreements without ever having any true empathy for each other. Or right. two countries can reach a ceasefire, but right. there's no love. There's right. no the, empathy or understanding. Or the church love. committees figure right. out how to deal with the problem without really, you know, we're just going to get tactical with it mm -hmm. without d being drawn together in empathy and understanding of one another. And so yeah. we can make, we can make, we can make a solution that either it builds us uh, uh, bridges of strength in our relationships, or we can build solutions that actually strengthen the divides between us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's where empathy and understanding are so critically important. And it really communicates a, a value as a family. We value each other's feelings. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've saw one family in particular where the key thing that started the change for that family who had horrific sibling conflict was the mom began to really listen in all different kinds of situations to the difficult feelings of her oldest child who was struggling mm. so much. Mm. And we, we talk about this in the course. It's one of my favorite quotes in the whole thing. She said, Kyle, your big feelings are a gift. I'm so glad you share them with me. They're a gift to you. And it's even a bigger gift when you can use those big feelings to understand other people's big feelings. Mm. So there was so much in that statement of, I value all the tough stuff going on in you and I, because it helps me to know you better. Mm -hmm. And that was what began to help him to turn the corner in valuing his siblings' feelings as well. It's really good. It's really good. So they've, they're understanding each other. They're calm. They're hearing one another's position. And we haven't even gotten to the conflict yet. <laughs> <laughs> so what would they do next? Everyone's calm. I already feel the calm come on yes yes and the connection is happening so so how do we how do we actually solve that well we kind of walk parents through a three-step process of just starting with questions mm -hmm. you know instead of saying well you know you did this or let me hear this and i'm going to decide it's like well you know what was really going on under the surface here and what was important to each person that that um you were having trouble you know getting or you know just even questions like how did you solve this conflict kind of conflict before? Um, how could you get part of what's important to each of you? Uh, what's a way to take turns with the toy? Just guiding with questions mm -hmm. is really a great first step. And then if they struggle, then you can kind of just lay it more out. Like, would you like me to, to um, think of some choices for how to solve this since you're kind of stuck? So there's another question. And then if they say yes, then you can say, well, you could share the toy um, by taking five minutes a piece or um, you could figure out how to use it together in this way or that way. Mm -hmm. Which would you like to do? You know, so mm -hmm. then you can give them some some choices as needed to, you know, if they're just still struggling to come up with creative ideas. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, I mean, s simply stated for me, um, it was a, a matter of how do you want to solve this? A and inevitably, kids would say, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so it sounds like you don't know. I've got some ideas. Would you like to hear them? Mm. Because this needs to be solved before you go on with the rest of life. Uh, cause of how important it is. So do you want some ideas or do you want to think about it for a while? Mm. So it's still, is, it's, it's moving the process from, um, you know, you, uh, it's moving the process, all of it toward the kids taking responsibility to solve this. And early on, they're not going to have ideas. And so, so for us to offer some, as Lynn suggested, is a really helpful thing. But let's not offer them until we've given our kids' brains a chance to solve mm -hmm. this for themselves. Right. Uh, if their brains can't solve it for themselves, then how can we help them in a way that develops their brain's ability to solve this for themselves? So here's, here's, here's my idea. When kids use bad words for each other, um, and it, hurtful words, there's, there's, you know, people study this and it, for every one bad thing that you hear, it takes four good things to, to, um, counteract that. So are there four things that are kind and true that you could say about your sibling that, that would help make this right? Um, 
you know, and certainly uh, if there's one particular child who was the aggressor and some flagrant thing happened, um, you know, where does the apology come in? Are you instead of saying to your kids, um, well, now you've got to go say you've got to say you're sorry. you got to go to your room and you can't come out until you say you're sorry. Mm. That doesn't teach, teach kids to feel sorry. That teaches kids to say they're sorry when they don't feel sorry in order to get on with life. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, how, you know, and back to the understanding, sometimes the kid who ought to feel sorry says, I feel bad about what I did. Oh, and what do you want to do about that? I want to say, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I, I'll do better next time. You know, you get the apology in the context of eliciting understanding, but sometimes in the context of solve, it's like, well, one of the things that ought to happen here is for you to make this right, to apologize, to reconcile with your sibling. How do you want to do that? Sibling who got hurt, do you have any ideas about what would help this feel right to you? How do you want to solve it? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're not ready yet. You want to take some time? Okay, that's okay. You can take Mm -hmm. some time. Mm -hmm. One thing that's really important in this is to build a value of reconciliation outside the context of the immediate conflict. Mm -hmm. Because we just go in and try to make it up on the spot. It's like, I don't get what you're wanting me to do and why. But if we begin to talk about reconciliation and then we model it, with our spouse or other uh, close people, if if we're not married, um, you know, to to model that in adult mm-hmm. to adult relationships, and then to model it in our relationships with our kids. So when I have a blow up with my child, do I work it all the way through to the point where our hearts are really connected, and we've reconciled, and we can celebrate that in my relationship with my child? Mm-hmm. And I can say, doesn't this feel good to reconnect our hearts? and to really mm-hmm. reconcile. Mm-hmm. And then they have a context for that and something to draw them forward in the process of their own sibling conflicts. But sibling conflict is the toughest arena to learn it in because it's two kids, two immature nervous systems at once. So, mm-hmm. you know, step one, talking about it as a family. Step two, modeling an adult relationship. Step three, modeling it adult to child. And then they're going to have a really good start on working this out with each other. And they're going to see this is a cool process. This is important. Mm-hmm. I'm doing something that um, lots of other people, even adults, don't ever learn how to do. Yeah. And that actually leads us to the fourth step, which is celebrate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, which is really giving kids a sense of even your baby steps, tiny steps of getting better at this are so significant and are going to pay off in the long run and be so helpful to you in so many ways in life. So high five. This was a long, hard process, but just stuck with it. Mm. Mm, it's, I mean, I do see when you say let's model it outside of just even the family, moms listening can totally, I mean, I think they could probably think of a situation right now where they've had a conflict with another mom or they've had a conflict with their own siblings as adults, with their parents and, and mm-hmm. your kids are watching. Yeah. Are you just going to, you know, get upset, then talk badly about that person behind their back and not feel peace and continue right. to hold a grudge. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> or, and then wonder why your kids aren't getting along. Yes. And, or are you going to go straight to that person, help them understand your positioning, listen for understanding to their positioning, mm-hmm. try to come up with a solution, and then and then celebrate your relationship. I mean, I, I can think of a scenario where it was not easy for me, but of that happened and the kids saw. And so, yeah, I think, I think for me, a lot of it is that emotion of, going into the conflict um mm-hmm. of of like you said being annoyed over looking at it as a positive well chance. and i'll i'll add this too heather because we know a lot of parents annoyance is one of the feelings that parents have but especially if this is a chronic deal 15 times a day it goes on and on it's more than just annoyance it's mm-hmm. we're starting to develop a sense of fear we're starting to develop some resentment of the child who typically is the aggressor. Yep. Uh, you know, we've got all this unresolved stuff. Uh, we've got judgments, as Lynn suggested, f- from our past. So, yeah. you know, when, when Daniel would pick on Bethany, Lynn's first deal wasn't annoyance. It was it was maybe even a hint of leftover rage toward her older brothers that never got resolved when right. she was young. Right. The healing so, of that past. Yeah. yeah. So there's so many feelings that we have that that compel us to to engage out of that place mm-hmm. uh, that we ourselves haven't looked at, taken to the Lord, taken every thought captive to the obedience of Christ and and let God work on our own hearts so that we can be sincerely, truly 
calm when we come into this. I have a question too about the whole solving and understanding. What if, you know, some of your kids are just wired to have a higher EQ, emotional quotient, than others so they can take that other person's perspective easier than others. Uh, mm-hmm. That same kind of child may be more strong-willed and st- stubborn or whatever negative term you want to use, but more <laughs> Spirited in their stance. <laughs> totally describing our older two. Okay. Bethany, uh, okay. This, this was a scenario one time for Bethany. She was still really young, like maybe four or five. And she accidentally stepped on Noah's, her youngest brother's Lego creation. Daniel walked over and whacked her a good one. Right. And she says through her tears, he was just trying to protect his little brother. You know, she totally got what was going on with him. He couldn't go there very easily. Mm. Um, so we had to, we are, are, we had very different goals for our two kids. Um, and we talk about this in the course with some extra information on how to, you know, strengthen different kinds of kids. Mm. Um, she needed work in assertiveness and confidence mm. in conflict. He needed work in empathy. We did found lots of different ways to grow empathy and insight into emotions to grow that EQ, mm. uh, that emotional quotient outside the context of the argument. So then those skills would be more accessible within the conflict mm-hmm. situation. And that was hugely important. Well, and we talked about the differences between our kids, with our kids, not in the heat of the moment, but at dinner. Mm -hmm. Uh, or as we drove along the road. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, Bethany's really good at understanding feelings, and she feels things really deeply. And Daniel, you're really good at protecting underdogs. Mm -hmm. Um, And and those are good things. There's also ways in which those things can make life a little harder for you right now. Mm -hmm. So, Daniel, if, 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 if you're looking at Bethany, who feels things a lot, and that's her thing, um, what, what's it like to be her? And Bethany, if you're looking at Daniel, who has, you know, loves to protect underdogs, and that's where that came, I mean, that's where that came from. That statement in the middle of that conflict didn't come because we taught our kids how to interact that way in the middle of a conflict. It came that way because we addressed the differences in who they were outside of the conflict and set them up to understand each other's strength and their own strength and their own struggle and the, and and each of their own sort of work areas, if you will. Yeah. So we're going to be working with Bethany on standing up for herself, and we're going to be working with Daniel on what it's like to be somebody else. Yeah, and, and t- they are, their superpowers are always their weakness, right? Like, mm-hmm. and, and we're shaping yeah. them constantly, but that even comes into a conflict situation. I, I have one more area I'd like to talk about for the mom who has maybe in their mix of family members a child with special needs. And so that conflict can look uh, either like even bigger sometimes because maybe it's a child with ADD, maybe it's a child uh, who has autism, maybe it's a child who who is uh, in general difficult uh, to manage or or have in the home and then it it rubs against a sibling. And so any advice you would have for that mom who is in a constant state of that being a stressful place for her? Yeah. Well, it's it sounds like it's kind of a pat answer, but these ideas were developed out of kids with, I mean, all of our kids in at one point in their life or another got a diagnosis with ADHD. Mm-hmm. Um, our oldest, we kind of wonder if he might not have ended himself up on the, on the Asperger's spectrum at some point if he had been raised in a less emotion-focused home. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it, it, it's sort of like these things really do work with this type of child. It's mm-hmm. just you have to be so much more diligent to really, you know, especially for a special needs child, their brain is going to, their their frontal lobe is going to go offline in a hurry when they're upset. Right. So fight or flight really is going to hit in. Yeah. yeah, yeah fight yeah. or flight is going to just steal yeah. your potential for a good resolution. So you really have to calm them down and then be very intentional for, so that's the calm and then the understand, be very intentional about building empathy. And we just did um, a post uh, a very extensive post on building empathy in kids. It's actually one of the the resources in the sibling course that we just threw out to the public. And um, you can find that on our website of concrete steps to build empathy, primarily outside the conflict time, and then how to bridge that to the, the conflict situation. So um, a real focus on skill building for these struggling kids. 
um, is important. So you're not letting them off the hook. You're not, Mm -hmm. you know, solving things for them, but it just takes an extra level of diligence. The process is going to be longer and Mm -hmm. slower because they need to, to, you know, they're not going to access those skills as quickly and easily. Um, Also, visuals are helpful for those kind of kids. Mm -hmm. Um, As part of the course, we have a a printout that you can get of little cartoon figures match these these calm understand solve and celebrate yeah yeah love that yeah yeah when the language is less that you can point to that and gesture to where you are in the process exactly yeah one of the things we learned just one thing to add to that and then i'll be quick Um, (laughs) i actually i actually learned this in the context of work with other people's kids and we would bring together high-risk kids of all ilks you know kids on the spectrum kids uh, uh, with diagnoses of all sorts, medicated kids um, in this youth outreach that I worked in. And um, w- one of the keys to helping them solve, be prepared to solve conflict, we couldn't do it in the heat of the moment, so we had to do it outside the heat of the moment, w- was to have each of them figure out what it, how I'm like you. Mm. So it's like, uh, uh, he, he, I remember one time we had a kid who'd seen a murder and he lived in the city. And he grew up in gangs and, you know, this was a suburban outreach and, and much less of that sort of thing going on in the, in the neighborhood that we were. And he's just like, nobody gets me. Nobody understands me. And I was like, well, what did it feel like? What was, what was your feeling? Well, it was scary and it was awful. And does anybody in the room ever feel scary before about something? What's something pretty extreme you felt scared about? Well, the time that my dad had an explosion and broke the table when my mom, so you understand scare. It's a different kind. It's a different setting, but the Fear feels the same, right? So you two are alike in that you feel that same feeling just over very different things. Mm. And and those kids become allies. It's like, oh, I'm like him and ooh, mm-hmm. I'm like her. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden they're for each other instead of against each other most yeah. of the time. But then when they fight, they remember, oh, we're more like each other than we are not like each other. And so we've got some interest in going back to how it was before. Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, it made me think of West Side Story. <laughs> Right. Exactly. Yeah, they yeah. they think they're against each other, but if they really knew each other, they would yeah. see that their their core issues are Heather, the same. Can I just, can yeah. I just jump in with a couple of yeah. key scriptures? Yeah, because we haven't actually brought any of those up, and these are just really precious um, to us. One is just encouraging kids to speak the truth in love, and really helping them understand that. In a four, Ephesians four fifteen, and then Matthew five twenty three and twenty four. If you kind of shorten it down, it suppose your brother. Or sister has something against you, go and make peace with them. Mm -hmm. Um, And then Matthew 5, 9, blessed are the peacemakers. They will be called children of God. And in the message, it says, live out this God-created identity the way our Father lives toward us, generously and graciously, even when we're at our worst. Mm -hmm. And so these sibling conflicts can be such an arena for the gospel to come alive in the midst of our messes. And I just wanted to make sure we closed with that thought. I love it. And I love it. And and I don't know if this is getting into something too much. Uh, You can tell me, but I I had this thought when you're talking about families with kids with special needs, it taking longer. And I'm thinking some families may think, wow, what you described on that peace process, that sounds like a long time. And our fights are happening right when we're about to leave the house and go to the next thing. And I know some are... There's a little less be here, do that kind of feel, but there might still be the conflict happens and we're supposed to leave the house. It's always Mm -hmm. happening when you're supposed to go to church. Do you have any, (laughs) (laughs) do you have any tips for that? You know, the conflict happens and we're about to have to leave and it doesn't feel like there's enough time or space to take care of this. Absolutely. Okay. Um, It was actually one of the case studies we do in the course. Kyle's mom, Brenda, came up with the idea um, of there was notebooks. Each child had a notebook in the car and a, a pen or a pencil attached to it. And then she said, you know what, guys, we can't solve this now. So we're going to get in the car and write down what you're upset about that. It was often when they she drove them to school. And they say, when we get home from school, we're going to take our notebooks and we're going to remember to solve this well then. Mm -hmm. And that just brought peace to people. They wrote, you know, the littler ones were drawing a picture of the conflict. The older one was writing it down and then they'd solve it when they got home. And the notebooks were a visual reminder of our commitment to true reconciliation and not smoothing things over. 
Mm, that's good. That's very, very practical. Thank you. Well, Jim and Lynn, you've done it again. And I will share the links with everyone in the show notes for this new sibling course, uh, describing your peace process, which is so helpful to all of us heading into summer. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, it was fun well, to always connect a joy, again. And uh, we look forward to staying in touch, Heather. Fabulous. Thank you. Have a great day. Yeah, all right, you, you too. too. Blessings. Thanks, y'all, for joining me today. So if you want to check out their course, it is $28, but you can get 20% off of that if you use the code DMA20. And all you have to do to find that course is go to don'tmomalone.com forward slash siblings, because there's more than one siblings, and use that code DMA20, save 20%. Uh, and such. it's five sessions. I mean, if you have older kids, you could probably watch it with your kids. It's a great tool to help them become the reconcilers and their relationship. I'm going to pray over us as we are getting this summer geared up. Lord, I know that you put us in families. You gave us relationships. And part of the goal of that was to refine us, to help us lean on you more, but also so they have the opportunity to love people well, to see situations from other people's perspectives, to have compassion, to be generous, to show Christ to those around us. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us as we guide our children. I know we have a lot of work to do in my own home, and I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would move in the hearts of my kids so that they can see as you see God, to not just want their way, but to consider the needs of others. I pray, Lord, that you would guide us this summer that we could make good memories and grow closer together and just have a lot of fun, God, and enjoy the creation that you've given us. I pray, Lord, for each family represented that's really struggling, that you would give hope and peace and comfort. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all. See you back here next week for week two. If you're looking for discussion questions, remember those are in the show notes. If you need support, if you're leading a podcast club, you can always go to don'tmomalone.com slash join, get emails, join our Facebook group, ask questions. So thankful y'all are joining us. Adios. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Don't Mom Alone podcast. If you're wanting to connect with more people and more resources to help remind you that you're not alone, head over to don'tmomalone.com. That's where you'll also find show notes with any links mentioned by our guests. Most importantly, I want you to know the good news, the great news that you're not alone because God has promised to always be with you. With faith in Jesus Christ, the one who died for you and rose again, Jesus said when he left, he was going to leave a helper, a comforter to be with us. God in us. Moms, that's superpower. So while you're washing dishes at your kitchen sink, while you're driving to and from work, while you're feeding that baby late into the night, while you're cleaning sticky floors, God promises to be just as present with you as when you're worshiping in a church pew. As it says in Zephaniah 3:17, the Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He takes great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love and he will rejoice over you with singing. Now that's good news. Have a great day.